Hi, we're here at the Holtorf Medical Group with Dr. Holtorf, and today we're going to be talking about thyroid disease. So Dr. Holtorf, uh, thyroid disease has been in the news a lot lately since Zoe, um, Zoe Saldana, who is a star on the Guardians of the Galaxy, shared that she had Hashimoto's. And there's been a lot of controversy about it, so what exactly is Hashimoto's? Well, it's interesting. What is Hashimoto's? And I think it's great that she's basically bringing out more awareness because it's very common and it's certainly getting more common and there's reasons behind that. But, you know, basically Hashimoto's is when the body is attacking the thyroid. And uh, basically, so instead of uh, uh, basically trying to fight an infection, it's, it's going after the thyroid. So it's an autoimmune disease. Okay. And I know a lot of doctors um, say this, and it's another controversial statement, but are there any treatments for it? You know, there, there is, absolutely. And you get a lot of endocrinologists and doctors say, why check it, because we can't do anything about it. But you can make significant benefits from numerous treatments, uh, depending on what the cause is, uh, with Hashimoto's. But it is, it is treatable. Okay, like what would be some of the treatments that you would suggest for And somebody? one thing, when you look at the underlying cause of Hashimoto, so let's say you have two sides to your immune system, you have Th1 and Th2. Th1 gets stuff inside the cell, Th2 gets stuff outside the cell. Normally they're balanced. What happens with autoimmune disease, such as Hashimoto's, you're basically the Th1 is too low, the Th2 is too high. So there's an imbalance of the immune system. Now what causes this? Many things chronic infections. So if you look at all autoimmune diseases, probably about 90 per, uh, plus percent, if not 100 percent, are driven by a chronic infection. You look at rheumatoid arthritis, lupus, MS, all related to an infection. Kill the infection, the autoimmunity goes away. So also, you can also be caused by other allergens. So for instance, gluten is a big cause of Hashimoto's. So either finding that infection and or, and often those go together, you actually get a chronic infection, which then causes immune dysfunction. Now you're allergic to basically gluten, which you wouldn't be before, it becomes a vicious cycle on a chicken or the egg. So what came first, we don't know. It's interesting that you mentioned that because Zoe did say something about going gluten and dairy free and it really helped her. Do you see that a lot with a lot of patients? It, it certainly can and does it work for everyone? No, but it's certainly a good place to start. Okay. And, uh, and oftentimes you can get uh, benefit from that. Okay. Um, what about iodine? That's another one of those. That's and iodine is controversial. If you read all the textbooks, it says do not take iodine can cause autoimmune thyroiditis or Hashimoto's. So in the short term, that is definitely true, but the, the long-term data is showing that long-term iodine can actually reduce the incidence of Hashimoto. So it's one of those things, especially I would do a blood test. You don't want too much, you don't want too little, uh, and supplement that, but be very careful if you have Hashimoto's or the opposite, uh, Graves' disease, which are actually caused by the same thing, the antibodies attack in the thyroid. One happens to attach the receptor, causes high, one causes low, but they're really the same illness. Okay. And I do see that you have a couple of items here. Um, are these specifically for Hashimoto's or? Yeah, so we, we do have what we, uh, is the thyroidine, which is the iodine. We have a ThyroRx, um, which has a number of different supplements in there, which will, again, modulate the immune system and allow the body to, to basically stop attacking the thyroid. And we'll see good response with those. And then, you know, a lot of things are now coming back to the gut. And, you know, majority of your immune system is in the gut, so, and the gut bacteria often determine how much inflammation in the body. So again, Hashimoto's, if you have someone with high inflammation, they're going to be at high risk for allergies, sensitivities, autoimmune disease. And by balancing with probiotics, you really need high dose probiotics, uh, can, can often make a difference. Okay. And uh, just for a last question, I know that uh, you recently were in a book about uh, LDN. Um, can that help Hashimoto's disease? Yeah, low-dose naltrexone, or LDN, is probably the number one. If you had to pick one treatment that is most likely going to work, it would be LDN. So what it is, is a, basically naltrexone is used for someone, let's say they overdose on pain pills, um, narcotics, they basically go to the hospital, they give them naltrexone, which blocks that. So that's a very high dose. Okay. But they found at very low dose, it's an immune modulator. So it lowers that inflammation. So it's being used for chronic infections such as Lyme because it raises that good immunity. So when someone says it's immune, and we'll use immune boosters for actually Hashimoto's, things like thymosin alpha-1, which raise Th1, you say, why would you use an immune booster for Hashimoto's? It's high immunity. 
it's not really high immunity, it's high and low, it's an imbalance. So lotus naltrexone does both. It raises the good immunity and lowers the bad, which is why it's also used in cancer, uh, you know, to raise the immune system, chronic infections, chronic fatigue syndrome. All these things are associated with an abnormal immune system, which is the same thing that's going on with Hashimoto's. Okay, well, thank you for all that information, for clearing those things up, Dr. Holtorf. And uh, for more information, go ahead and check out holtorfmed.com.